Hey guys, what's up? Moto Flight Guy here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to share some footage with you that I shot the other day. And I shot this footage as a strictly a debrief point. But once I got to reviewing it, it's pretty cool footage and it's pretty interesting. So I thought I would share it with you guys as well. I took my friend Lyle up with me, who's a CFII in the tailwind. And I told him I wanted to do some accelerated stalls, which was a maneuver that I personally hadn't done before. Typically, those are taught to commercial pilots and not private pilots. However, I just love expanding my envelope and exploring the envelope of the airplane. So we went up and we did several stalls. The footage is pretty cool, and I'll just play it now, and I'll do a little bit of narration on top of it and kind of explain what was happening. So stick around. So I've already got a bunch of short clips of each stall stacked together. I'll just click play and watch them along with you guys and kind of talk about what was happening and what we were going through as we were doing these. So let's start the first one. And this is Lyle demonstrating the first accelerated stall. And he's learning the airplane because he doesn't have any time in this thing like I do. So Notice the buffet he overdid the recovery on the first one as as I did too it's very easy to do in this airplane so he's going to do another one here to the right and I want you to just pay attention to the buffet because the airplane gives you a ton of warning that there's going to be a stall I mean there's a very long period of buffet leading up to it so that's that's really interesting and really cool I didn't expect that when we went up to do these So we're leaving a little bit of power in because we want to force the stall ourselves above normal stall speed. Look at that buffet. And it's just to ease of the back pressure and then you're using your feet to level the wings, not ailerons. At least that's the intent. I, you know, I probably put a dab of aileron in. So here's my first one and pay attention to the amount of buffet here because I actually didn't really get a clean break over. I was a little timid on, on popping the elevator. Surprisingly though the airplane with, with a little bit of power in it uh, seemed like it would fly in the buffet for a long time. Like almost all day long really. If you didn't actually, actually pop the stick. Look at that buffet. So I just kind of recovered. I could tell that I wasn't going to get a clean break over. And you can see Lyle there. He's, he's telling me, yeah, you got to go ahead and give it a good pop to, to get the stall to happen. So here I am doing another accelerated stall to the right. And I think I gave this one a pretty good pull. There's the buffet happening, more buffet, more buffet, more buffet. And you can see me, I wanted to wanted to dab the, the aileron in, but then I got back on my feet. And you can hear the throttle. I had a bad tendency to want to add throttle in, which is the recovery is nose over, level the wings with your feet, and then you can get in throttle after you got airspeed. But it's it's a hard habit to break, which is why we go do flights like this. Give it a good pop there, break over, level it with your feet, get in the throttle. But the airplane gives you a lot of warning. It's uh, If you inadvertently did this, you were ignoring a lot of signs. And so here is an actual turning stall. So we're just stalling it with the power off in a turn. We're not going to accelerate the stall or give it a pop. We're just trying to maintain altitude and let the speed decay. And you can see I put my hand on my lap because <laughs> I was so bad at wanting to get in the throttle too early. You can see it buffeting pretty good there. There's the brake. And here we go. 
this is a power on stall so rotation speed in this is about 70 miles an hour indicated so we're slowing it down to about 75 indicated and then we're going to go full throttle and pull back and stall it with the power on now I don't let this one really break hard I just I recover it at once the buffet gets pretty aggressive there we go full throttle we're pitching and you can see the airspeed it, uh, decaying it's the bottom left gauge and just as soon as some buffet came on I, I recovered but really I mean pretty pretty mild pretty docile so after we got done doing all those stalls and some maneuvers and stuff, we came back to the airport and of course we knocked out a bunch of landings. I'll play some of those landings now and I'll just narrate over the top of them and, and talk about what's going on. So let's start the first one here. So these first couple, I was rusty, you know, I haven't flown very much and I kept trending high. So you see me doing slips here on short final. Again, left crosswind, and these are all going to be no flap wheel landings. So I did touch down with the uh, left main first, which is what you want, but definitely not as smooth as what I can do in the airplane when I'm flying it a lot. And you'll also notice there on that first one I did there, um, I didn't keep my left aileron in on the rollout. I should have kept that crosswind control in there. Rust builds up quick when you don't fly enough. So here's another landing. Again, I'm trending high again. So you can see I'm in a slip here. And the reason I don't use flaps in it if I don't have to is it, it really pitches the nose down a lot and I just don't like how much uh, stick pressure it takes. Not bad, and you can see I actually rolled my uh, left aileron crosswind control in that time, and I transitioned the tail on that one. You can see me follow the tail down with the with the stick there. Now you'll see uh, Lyle doing one. He watched me do three or four of them. We're shooting for about 95 to 100 miles an hour indicated. We're full fuel here uh, with two guys in it and uh, no flaps. So that's basically what I how I fly the airplane. Left main first. Very nice control. That's what I'm telling him here too. Is I'm like you know nothing to complain about there. He has no time in this airplane, so that just goes to show that. There's nothing really hard about flying this airplane. It's just different than a lot of other airplanes. I think the wingspan on it is 28 feet, so you don't have a lot of wing there. That's why the uh, the approach speeds are a little bit higher than most airplanes. Here's Lyle's uh, second landing in here, and again, just right on profile. I mean, he's right on speed, right on descent rate. Looking good. Again, left left main first, then the right, and he's holding left aileron in there. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's just got to get used to the the pressures in this airplane, and really the Whitman gear is extremely forgiving. So it's not it's not anything that, in my opinion, it's not an airplane that's going to bite you. I think if you have basic tailwheel skills, you can fly this thing, especially with some coaching. You know, if you've got somebody that's got uh, like me, that's got 130 hours in it, sitting in the left seat, kind of give me some pointers. It's, it's not hard. And here's Lyle's third one. I believe he transitioned the tail down on this one. Touch and goes on uh, wheel landing. Touch and goes are good, but they're definitely not all you should do. I mean, you really need to transition the tail to the ground because that's where that's where uh, you can get bit real quick. And 
really nice wheel landing there. And you can see he transitioned the tail down, but he should have uh, should have pulled the stick back all the way to his gut. He didn't really do that there, and you can you could kind of tell when the tail set, it kind of bobbled a little bit. And this is the last landing of the day, I believe. I quit on a good one here. You can see me looking, craning my neck around there. I typically favor a continuous turn to final in this airplane. I, I gotta say I'm not really a big fan of the box pattern and a lot of that has to do with the visibility. See, we're power, power idle all the way around, all the way down to the ground. And just rolled that thing on there. Did a lot better job at holding center line on that one. I know it's hard to see with the uh, exposure on the outside, but nothing to complain about there, so. Yeah, it was a, overall it was a really good, fun training day. So I just wanted to share that footage with you guys. I thought the stalls were pretty interesting. And for those that might be wondering, this airplane is still for sale. Um, it's currently for sale. It's listed on Facebook Marketplace right now. And it'll probably be going back up on Barnstormer soon. So if you're looking for a nice, cheap-to-operate tailwheel airplane, uh, this airplane's for sale, and it's great. Um, I love the airplane. The only reason I'm getting rid of it is to build my Thorpe. So if you're interested in it and you have any questions about it, my email will be down in the description. Shoot me an email. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. But until then, I'm going to keep flying it because it's a ton of fun. So as always, thank you guys for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. I do have some videos in the pipeline, so this won't be the last. So we'll see you guys on the next one.